What's up, everybody? Metal Mark here from Rob's Metalworks, San Antonio's longest standing metal institution. We are here tonight in the heart of the Alamo City at Backstage Live. And it brings me great pleasure to bring to you John Keevil from Warbringer. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. Hey, thanks, man. What's up? Uh, now, Warbringer is, has been working on the national scene for quite some time now, and it really seems like a lot of that hard work is starting to pay off. Uh, for those fans who aren't quite in tune with the band yet, share a little bit about your beginnings. Well, we uh, started out in Ventura County, California. Um, pretty much straight out of high school, I wanted to start a band, met up with John Locks, and we've been working since, and it's been about uh, eight or nine years. For the last five or six of them, we've been touring the U.S. and overseas pretty actively and we've released four records. The newest album, uh, Warbringer 4 Empire's Collapse, uh, came out at the end of October and it's really you know the best piece of work that the band's put out as of yet. Uh, in your opinion, what sets this record apart from previous releases? Well first off, uh, you know, glad you feel that way. We're always trying to take the next step forward with our music. You know, I figure if you're not trying to do that, there's, there's no point to even making another record. What sets it apart, I think, the level of performance, songwriting, diversity among the record, all of that together um, works to make it a better record than what we've been able to do before, I think. I guess some of our strongest songs on it. And uh, I think everyone's performance is really top notch. Everyone's pushed themselves, musicians, and tried to write really interesting songs. And we spent a good deal of time making it. And uh, we're really happy with how it came out. Cool, cool. We've been fans of the band for quite some time. Uh, one thing that struck us immediately about this record was the cover art is so different from previous album releases. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the concept behind that and how the concept ties into the theme of the album? Yes. Um we deliberately made the cover art very different on this. I think uh, bands like us, you know, first off, we wanted to do something different just for the fact that we had uh, the excellent Dan Seagrave do the last two album covers. And uh, he has a very distinct style that's all his own. And we wanted to, uh, we don't want to do the same thing like visually too many times either. So we, um, we decided to just go with something completely different. We got Ben's friend from Pittsburgh, Adrian Rossi, who's a ta really talented artist from there, who uh, drew that up and uh, we wanted to make it look more like medieval art or, uh, and really simple as opposed to all our other albums have a lot of stuff going on in the cover. This one we really wanted like one image with one idea behind it. As you can see it's just uh, a king, he's on, on his throne but you can tell his kingdom is lost and he's just in a state of despair and you know vultures are around him just waiting. Our, our own country may be on this path as of now as we are turning away from the core ideas that make America excellent in general and becoming something altogether much darker, which cannot end well. There have also been a couple of uh, changes in the lineup as of late. You guys got a new second guitar player, a new bass player. Uh, talk to us a little bit about who they are, where they're from, and what they brought to the band. Well, Jeff Potts and Ben Motsman were both in a band together years ago, and we knew them when we were starting out because they were also a thrash metal band from the States of, you know, it was coming out at the same time. Uh, they were called Meltdown and then Mantic Ritual, and they put out one record. Um, it's a good record, too. And we've, uh, we used to hang out with them when we, we were in Pittsburgh. They would hang out with us when they were in L.A. Um, so we've known each other for like six years. We needed uh, those spots were, were open. We needed people to do it to make this record and to finish the tours last summer. So uh, they had just moved to L.A. because their band had broken up, and so it really fell into place quite well. And uh, it was good to fit in right, right away because we've just known them for so long anyway and they're already uh, quite in tune with what we're doing. Cool, cool. Uh, of, the, of those, Ben Motsman is still with us on this tour. Original guitar player Adam Carroll has returned at, since the record came out, which is also great because, you know, Adam finished what he had to do in, um, for the last years and returned and uh, he's killing it on, on the shows right now. So it's really great. He plays all the new songs um, quite excellently as well. And Ben Motsman is also doing a great job on this. That guy hits his bass pretty fucking hard. Awesome, awesome. Uh, one thing about Warbringer is you guys are always touring. I think last year you finished a big tour with uh, Iced Earth and Symphony X. Uh, now you're on this killer tour with Creator and Overkill. As far as 2014, what would touring hold for the band? And is there any band that you guys would like to tour with in particular? Well, there's a lot of bands we'd like to tour with. I mean, Creator and Overkill are great bands to be touring with. No complaints there. It's been, been fucking excellent. Um, the, ne the only tour that's announced right now for 2014 is uh, with Iced Earth in Europe. And that's like January through into February. And it's 
It hits everywhere. It goes all kinds of places. From uh, all the way from Portugal to Romania to Sweden and everywhere in between. Cool, cool. Um, as far as being labeled a revival thrash band, how does that make you feel? Uh, well, I've heard it before, so... Um, I don't know. I think I think some of that's like a way to try to write off music and rather than to judge music actually by its own merits. Like, are the fucking songs good? You know, does the band have energy? Is there like heart in what they're doing? Um, and I think the answer for a lot of newer bands, like there are newer bands playing thrash metal that do those things well. And I think in the case of a band like us, I don't think you can directly compare us to any single band and be like, they're doing that. I think we have... We have our own take on it, our own sound, and the new record, I think, was a step further in that direction. And we really, uh, that's part of the visual thing, is we really want to say to people, like, hey, we're not just, you know, like, putting, like, 80s thrash records in a blender and here's the result or anything. We're writing songs, and they're, they're interesting songs, and they deserve to be judged on their own merits. So I think the, the term, like, retro thrash, revival thrash, re-thrash is thrown around to try to, like, discredit these bands for apparently no reason without actually investigating the quality of the work from a uh, analytical perspective. I agree, and especially on the new album, there are a lot more melodic sound to it, but you know, at the same time, there's still that heavy, fast thrash that you got there, but you know, we're just real big fan fans of the album. You know, we've been big fans since uh, War Without End. Um, before we conclude here, uh, any last words you want to share with uh, people around the world who will see this interview? Well. Check out the new record. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, check us out on the road. We'll uh, wreck some shit. And I'll see you, see you guys out there. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. And everybody, be sure to go check out the new album now, Warbringer 4, Empires Collapse. And remember, you saw the band here on Rob's Metalworks.